This is Nina Taylor of the Gospel News. Please stay tuned for Season 4 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show with your host, Apostle Designate, Minister John E. Ross. Why the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, thou should have no pleasure in thee. Jesus is gone and what your ear is soon to come. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side. Jesus is calling. He's calling. Jesus is calling. Even calling to you. Remember, he called from day one. Day one. Remember them times you had the stacks and the guns. Man. Remember them times where everything went wrong and you blamed everyone else with that same old song you got.
Blessings and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your radio apostle, apostle designate minister John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead minister and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for season four of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is... Bishop Dennis Tillman. Bishop Tillman, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, please tell the kingdom about yourself. Who is Bishop Dennis Blair Tillman? Well, my name is Bishop Dennis Blair Tillman. I am a faithful servant of Christ, husband, son, father, bishop elect and also an author. I am God-fearing, and after God's own heart, and I'm a chosen vessel. Amen, amen, and amen again, kingdom. Our topic for discussion for this episode is being spiritually prepared. Kingdom, one of the greatest mistakes that we can make is the wrong interpretation and understanding of how to properly prepare ourselves. We often associate proper preparedness to what a world without Christ considers the proper preparation. But when it comes to God and the work of this great gospel, hallelujah, initially there is no way that we can properly prepare ourselves because the best preparation is our yes. And a willing, yielding vessel is the best preparation, kingdom. I want you to truly think. Think when it comes to life and the many devastating things and challenges that we can and some do face that can happen in an instant, in a literal batting of an eye to what could and does happen before birth or after a birth. Kingdom, there is no way we can be prepared That's one of the main reasons why in Jeremiah, the first chapter, God told and declared to the prophet, before I formed you in the womb, I already knew you. Kingdom, this is our holy God revealing to us that God has taken responsibility for our forming and let us know I have yet approved you. And I have a purpose and a plan for us. Hallelujah. Before we would ever know that we, what we may face in this life, much less be prepared for. Because he, God, is our preparation. Especially when it comes to the work of the gospel. In Second Peter 1 and 10, the apostle declares, Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing. You be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For doing these things, meaning actively developing these virtues, ye will never stumble. Talking about our spiritual growth, ye shall never stumble and will lead others away from sin. Kingdom is accepting Jesus and developing ourselves in him and he in us and we in each other. We are like then a loaf of bread that can properly teach, lead, evaluate, guide, and prepare us for the work concerning the cross. It's the taking off of our flesh nature and putting on Christ's nature that that properly prepares us for life and what life may bring or will bring. Bishop Tillman, Please, sir, I want you to share your testimony. I have read the information that you have sent, but please, Bishop, proceed as God has given you. Growing up as a child, um, I faced many obstacles. I dealt with a lot growing up as a child. I was molested. I was sexually abused. I was physically abused to the point that had me at a place of being 
um, feeling some type of way about myself, feeling some type of way of who I am and who God has called me to be. Yeah. Um, because many times in life, I, 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 I just didn't want to follow the will of the Father because at a young age, when I was 16, that's when I first, you know, got further into church. But when I was 11 or 8, around 8 or 11, I was actually molested as a child, and that took a toll in my life, and, and that took me to a place of a feeling like, why, Lord, why did you let this happen to a child that is innocent? And, and I was very young at the time, and, and, and I was thinking of the things that happened to me, and I was thinking of the things that were taking place. And I didn't know what to do, and then I didn't know where to go, and then I didn't know who to turn to. So what happened was at the age of 12 years old, I began to write. It was my happy place, and I was comfortable in that place. And I felt like I was free from everything that was going on all around me. So I wrote poetry. I wrote many poems that express of how I was feeling at the time or many times in my childhood. So I began to write and it did not end there. So I, I began to have that anger build up on the inside of me. And then at the age of 15, I had a nervous breakdown and, and I was in the psychiatric ward for about six months at um, in the age of 15, going into 16 years old. And, and that took a toll in my life because it took most of my childhood because being abused, misused physically, sexually, and being in a psychiatric ward. And, and I was like, Lord, why did my childhood have to be taken because of what people have chosen to do to me that was wrong? And I didn't know what was happening at the time, but God has shifted me Hallelujah. and told me it's going to be all right. Yes, Lord. It's going to be okay. And he said, weeping may endure for a night, but he said, joy cometh in the morning. And sometimes people may do some things to choose to do it, but at the end of the day, God did not tell them to do it. It is the choosing of the people that choose to do you wrong, rather than yeah. God telling them to do you wrong. Yeah. Because God is not a God that hates you, or God is not a God that's evil. God is just, all just, and all righteous. And he loves each and every one of us. So when I was growing up at the age of 15, 16, I began fighting, and I began at a place of being mad at everyone around me. So I didn't know where I was headed, and I didn't know where I was going in life, and I didn't know what I wanted to do as I got older. Um, so I was always in the church at a young age, at 15, 16, 17, but I joined the youth choir, but I wasn't actually um, one that had a heart of being in ministry. So at the age of 18, God turned the situation around deep inside my heart of what I was going through and what I was dealing with. And what I was dealing with hurt me, yes. But God turned that situation around, yeah. and he worked it out for my good. And what happened was, at the age of 18, I got saved, but the trouble did not end there. I thought I was saved, but yes, I'm saved. But I was taken to a place of feeling depressed, I'm feeling down and discouraged at the age of 19. So... I got into drugs, alcohol, all of those things took place. Then many years later, I was hit by the bus, suffered like burning injuries, but it healed from them. And then lung disease, healed from that. And also many situations that God has dealt, had me to deal with, but I'm delivered and set free from it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Kingdom, there is a specific anointing 
That is for our specific callings. We are not all birthed into this earth to do the same things. We all have a specific purpose or calling. And the more of Christ's character we put on gives us the sanctification and the preparation for the leading and the guidance of God the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2 and 27 declares, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, it will abide in you and you will abide in him. John 16 and 13 declares, However, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you all things to come. Bishop, thinking back on the times when you did not know God or perhaps your relationship was not as solid as it is today, share with us the differences between facing life's journey with Christ from without Christ. Make those parallels for the kingdom. Before I got saved, I was at a place of um, being one that always sinned and um, at a place of doing always wrong and um, making always mistakes, um, knowing that it was doing, I was doing them. And um, but that was before I got saved. But when I accept the call upon my life and also being saved, um, it actually um, God has shifted some things in my life because that desire to do the things that I used to do, um, it's not in front of me or in my heart as if I wanted to do it like I did before. So many times people look at the situations or the problems or the issues that they faced before they got saved or before they answered the call that God has upon their life. They look at the situations as if they're wrong because they're not saved. I want to share with you that before I got saved, I was one that was always doing wrong. But when I got saved, I was one that made mistakes and fell short sometimes, or will fall short, but I'm still in alignment with God's will. Yeah. But when I answered the call upon my life, that changed who I was and who I am. So what happened was God has allowed me to be blessed with a gift and a talent and also with the anointing to reach many souls to his kingdom through me being a pastor or bishop elect, whatever it may be that you want to call me as me being a servant of Christ that is faithful. That, that's what it's about. When you get saved, you don't have that desire to wanting to sin. You just may fall short sometimes, but that desire in your heart is not there because your love for Christ is all in you. Yeah. And, and, and you have a relationship with him. But before, that relationship with Christ is not there. And the desire to do wrong and um, to do all the things against God, and I'm not saying that, you may know everything that you're doing, but at the end of the day, it's in your heart. Amen, amen, and amen again. Bishop, please tell us about your book, How God Changed My Life. Well, Spiritually Prepared is all about being spiritually ready or spiritually prepared for any obstacles that you may face in life or you may deal with time and time again. Spiritually Prepared is mostly about my testimonies and also uh, what God has brought me through and also encouragement words and uplifting words to encourage one another. Um, spiritually Prepared is something different 
than any other book that um, may have been uh, written by anybody else or written by me. So the poetry book, yes, but spiritually prepared is something that is different because not only is my testimony, but when you get into the book, you read something that will encourage you, something that will uplift you, something that when you're down with the press, you'll be blessed to be happy and thankful and grateful for the things that God has blessed you with. And when you think of the goodness of God and what he's done for you, yes. all you can say, your soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. to the Lamb of God, where would you be? And when I think about spiritually preparing, I'm spiritually prepared for any obstacles that I may face, any problems that may arise in my life, any situation that may I, I may deal with. But at the end of the day, being spiritually prepared is being ready for anything spiritually that you may face in life. Amen. And uh, please tell us about your book, How God Changed My Life. Spiritual prepared is something that God has put in my heart um, years ago. I, I, I just want to share a testimony with you guys um, that God, I shared it just a few minutes ago, but being hit by the bus, it took a toll in my life. Um, I was actually hit by a bus and I was actually suffering for, from uh, many severe life-threatening injuries. And the doctor said I needed surgery and this was happening and that was happening and all this was happening, all that was happening. But um, but God is shifting me um, to know that it's going to be all right. So what happened was um, God has turned that situation around and worked it out for my good. And I'm healed and covered by the blood of Jesus to receive that I'm set free from it. So to make a long story short, being also um, uh, diagnosed with lung disease in 2015, uh, 2014, around that time, it's, um, it, it's very powerful how God has shifted some things. So being diagnosed with lung disease, um, I went to the doctor, my primary care doctor, for a cold. I, I thought it was just a cold, so because I had it for weeks, and I didn't know what it was. So I told my primary care doctor, this cold I had for weeks. And this primary care doctor, my primary care doctor, said I needed to see a lung specialist. I said, okay. So I went to the lung specialist, and they, they said they need to run some tests on my lungs because something serious is going on on the inside of my lung. So they ran all the tests. Everything came back. And there was something wrong. So I felt discouraged. I felt down because I said, Lord, I got saved. I did this. I did that for you in your name. Why am I going through this and that? And I felt down and discouraged. I, I, I was like, Lord, is this something that's going to take my life? Because I'm doing everything according to your will. And I want to be here for my wife and my son, my family, the ministry, and everybody connected to me. I want to win more souls to your kingdom. I want to do your will and for the building of your kingdom. So to make a long story short, I didn't go back to the lung specialist for a whole year straight. They were sending me certified letters and they were calling me and I didn't answer. I didn't open the letters. And so I felt discouraged. I had unbelief on the inside of me to make a long story short. So about a year later, the same time around, God woke me up in the middle of the night. And he said, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. And he said, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. And then another time he said, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. But that third time I had to re-examine myself to realize I did not trust the Lord with all my heart within that situation, what I was going through. 
I had unbelief on the inside of me that was causing me to hinder my walk with Christ. But to make a long story short, I woke up my wife. I said, I'm going to get these tests done again because I know the Lord has turned this situation around and he's worked it out for my good. So to make a long story short, I got the test done again, every test. And the nurse called me a couple of weeks later. And she said, are you sitting down now? I said, I'm walking around my house. And, and she was telling me um, that what we found before on the inside of your lungs, we don't see it now. Keep on doing what you're doing because you don't have that lung disease or whatever what it was, it's not there anymore. Okay. But to make a long story short, it was something serious, but it turned into something to nothing. God turned something that was serious into something that is nothing there. God can turn the situation around and over here, he's going to work it out for my good. To make a long story short, I went back to the lung specialist doctor. I said, I want to go see the doctor herself to get the test result. So she came in the patient room. She said, Mr. Tillman, what are you doing? Keep on doing it because this is something, this is something uh, uh, spectacular. We, uh, we just are, are, are just... Uh, we just, we just, just grateful that whatever you are doing, keep on doing it. I said, but God. She said, excuse me. I said, but God. She said, excuse me. I said, my Lord's a healer, Jesus Christ. He healed me. I'm covered by his blood, separated with his love, anointed and saved by his grace. She said, wow, you're spiritual. Keep on doing what you're doing because God is blessing you. To make a long story short, God will bless you if you keep on doing what he's called you to do. God can turn a little bit into a lot. He can turn nothing into something. He can turn that something that is serious into something that is not serious. Have faith. Trust in God with all your heart. Amen. Bishop, please tell the kingdom where they can find your website or follow you on social media and purchase your books. Well, you can also find the book on this website, uh, K-Z-O-O Baptist United Open O dot Wix dot com. Uh, you can find it on that website. You can also go on uh, Facebook, uh, Spiritually Prepared, My Life Story, Dennis Blair Tillman. Um, you can find it on that Facebook page, or you can contact me, um, or you can also find it on Amazon soon again, um, but, or you can contact me um, directly. Uh, my Facebook page is Dennis Tillman, uh, D-E-N-N-I-S-T-I-L-L-M-A-N, and soon to be back um, in uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, so you look out for that. It's going to be a blessing and it's going to be an honor to share my testimony and also share with you to be spiritually prepared and ready for whatever obstacles you face or problems may arise in your life to be ready spiritually for what's to come. And how may the kingdom support your ministry? You can support us in any way. It may be help physically, mentally, financially, whatever way, um, you can support the ministry, kbuc2019 at gmail.com. It's PayPal. Or you can support the ministry by um, supporting, um, um, donating by, you know, blessing uh, to receive the Spiritual Appear at My Life Story book, um, a copy for you. And also on the site, there's a two and one package. So you get a hard cover and also um you also get a, a paperback so that's a blessing you can share with others 
Amen. Kingdom, let's talk to the Lord, can be heard on Spotify, Alexa, YouTube, His Hop Radio, Elation Radio, iTunes by Positive Power, Double XI, and Jerry Royce Live, and Sensational Sounds Radio every Saturday. My latest singles, Remember Now Thy Creator, are available in all digital stores. And please write us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Kingdom, we have began a radio station. To listen, please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. And please download our app from your app play store. The app is listed under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. On our radio station, we have 24-7 music, talk, and more. And this interview will be uploaded and will be in rotation on the radio station. So until next time, may God bless you and may God keep you living your life under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trust in God with all your heart. And God will always be a way for you. You will never leave no forsake us. Everyone trust in God. Trust in God.